Christmas stories. Horrible History presents the Genius Adventures. Those stairs are killing me. There's got to be an easier way. I can't make any sense of this book you've written, Ishmael. It's just a list of words. That's because it's a dictionary. What's a dictionary? Look it up. Oh, a dictionary. A book that gives the correct definition of words. Oh, I see. Very original. Of course it's original. I, Ishmael Al Jawari, am a great pioneer. Pioneer? What's... Oh, no. Don't tell me. Look it up. Um... Ah. The one who achieves or discovers something for the first time. Indeed. Yesterday it was the dictionary. Today I master human aviation! Aviation? Right, OK. Just bear with me. Aviation. The science of flight. Give me another. OK, well, that will be somewhere near the beginning. No, no, it's not here. Ah! Splat. Right, OK. Oh, yes, that's here. The sound made by a soft object on impact with a hard surface. Oh, this book's great, Ishmael. Ishmael? It's true. Ishmael al Jawari invented the Arabic dictionary, then died trying to invent human flight. It just shows how important planning is. Roman scientist, and I'm going to tell you about the wonders of the ancient Roman universe. It's amazing! We Roman scientists perfected complex architectural aids like concrete and arches, and that meant we could make buildings with vast domes like the Pantheon in Rome that lasted thousands of years. Imagine that! Not four, not three, not twelve, thousands of years! And we understood how the universe worked too. It was Julius Caesar who decided that a year would last 365 days with an extra day every four years for a leap year. Yeah! That Julius Caesar. No wonder Cleopatra fancied him. Amazing! And we knew all about Mercury and Neptune and Venus and Saturn and Uranus and Mars and Pluto and Jupiter! Really? That's actually quite impressive, you knew all about the planets. Yeah, but they're not just planets. They're all gods. Giant beings who play games deciding the fate of everyone in the world. It's ancient Roman scientific fact. You know, Brian, it always starts so well, doesn't but it? But luckily, 
We can work out what the gods are planning by cutting open animals and looking at their insides. It's how we predict the future. All right, fellas, if we could just... Uh... There's one bloke called a Harrisbix who'll cut open a chicken to find out what Saturn, the god of agriculture, is planning. It's a Roman scientific fact. Amazing. One of the most famous Victorian inventors was Alexander Graham Bell, who came up with the telephone. Ring a bell? Oh. But his design was to be improved by American inventor Thomas Edison. Good day to you. Mr. Edison, telephone for you. Thank you. What does that even mean? No, I bought your telephone. It's a new invention by this guy, Alexander Graham Bell. I thought it might interest you. It ties in nicely with the experiments we're doing on the transmission of sound. Really? It allows you to talk to somebody down a cable. You can talk to somebody in a different room and maybe, who knows, one day in a different building. Extraordinary. Well, can we try it? Of course, but Mr. Bell insists that we use the official telephone greeting. Which is? Ahoy hoy. As the caller, I have to say ahoy hoy to you. You say ahoy hoy back, that way we know we're receiving each other. Understood. Are you ready, sir? Oh, yes, indeed. Here we go. Ahoy hoy. Hello. No, sir, you have to say ahoy hoy back to me. Yes, I was just shocked that it actually worked, so the Victorian expression of surprise crept out. Hello, as in, wow! <clears throat> Shall we try it again? Yeah. <clears throat> ahoy hoy! Hello! Hello, you said it again. So did you. Well, I was surprised that you said it again. Well, I'm still surprised it works. <clears throat> okay, sir, shall we try it one more time? <clears throat> Ahoy hoy! Hello! Hello? You just said hello! Of course I said hello. I was surprised that you said ahoy hoy. I thought I was gonna say ahoy hoy first, and then you said ahoy hoy. That's why I said hello. Hello? <sighs> Sir, you have to... Doesn't matter. I'm gonna take these away. No, wait! I was just getting the hang of it! In fact, I think I can improve on the design. I very much doubt it, sir. You cannot even grasp the official telephone greeting. <laughs> Imagine a world where people say into the telephone, hello, goodbye. Hello. Hello. I think I have a problem. Another Victorian invention was photography. Say cheese. I always do. You! Kiss goodbye to time-consuming painting because photography is here. What? Yes. And we've got everything you need to know in our new photographic monthly chronicle. Hello. I'm Henry Fox Talbot, one of the great Victorian pioneers of photography. And with my handy tips, you'll be able to take photographs like this, and this, and even this. With exposure times of several minutes, best opt for an expression you can easily keep up. That's why we Victorians look so miserable in photos. And remember, whatever you do, don't try and maintain a smile. I'm Prince Albert. I can smile if I like. As you like, your highness. OK, hold it. Huh? Just hold it there. Nothing hard. And we've got all the very latest accessories. These rigid neck irons and body braces make movement blurs a thing of the past, don't they? He's trying to nod. And subscribe now to receive a voucher for a free photo session with a recently deceased loved one of your choice. Well, being photographed with a dead relative is the latest craze, isn't it, darling? Yes, it is. And I love you. Oh, darling. So get your copy of Photographic Monthly Chronicle today. The pastime with royal approval. I heart so much. I did say not to smile. I've started now, yo. Yeah. Those darn Germans are pushing us hard. We need something new to take the fight back to the Nazis. Well, this young chap here has apparently come up with some new kind of missile technology. Could be just what we need. Show us what you got, son. Associate and I have developed a technique to prevent the enemy from jamming the radio signals on our torpedoes. You know who you look like? I'm sorry? That famous Hollywood actress, what's her name? Hedy Lamar. Yeah. Yes, I'm she. No way! Oh, man! He likes you. No, I don't. You do. Don't be shy. I like you. Me too. Most flattering. Anyway, uh, back to my invention. Uh, the problem with the existing torpedo... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Why are you doing that axe? Uh, I was born in Austria. Uh, but I am here because I have invented something that might help us win the war. Are we in a movie right now? No. And unless you would like to be in a movie called How We Lost the War, I recommend you listen. The frequency hopping secret communication system I propose... I think I might propose in a minute. Wait, sir. <laughs> Will you please listen? The frequency of the signal constantly changes so It's that incredible. I almost believe you actually know what you're talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. Diva alert. Gentlemen, you are imbeciles. Good day. Uh, uh, Miss Lamar. Do you think I could be an actor? That's a yes. Oh, great exit. It's true. Hedy Lamar really was a famous movie star and inventor, and her plans eventually led to the creation of Wi-Fi, which of course we all use today. Top work, Hedy. Hmm, interesting. But that's not what's supposed to happen. Darling, I don't want to worry you or anything, but I think you might be dead. Yeah. I don't think so, darling. Well, this newspaper seems to think you aren't. It's always been very reliable in the past. Look, Dr. Alfred Nobel, the Swedish chemist and inventor of dynamite, died yesterday in the French resort of Cannes. Let me see that. Good grief, it does say I'm dead. Look what they're calling me here, the merchant of death. It says here, Dr. Alfred Nobel became rich by finding ways to kill more people even faster than ever before. Honestly, by reading this, you'd think that just because I'd invented dynamite, I am personally responsible for the death of thousands of people. I mean, honestly, have you ever heard such nonsense? I said, have you ever heard such rubbish? Sophie, if you have something to say. Well, you, you did invent what is, at this point in time, the most powerful explosive on Earth. And it has gone on to kill thousands and thousands of people. What's your point? All I'm saying is you have to accept when people hear the word Nobel, they're always going to think of dynamite. I knew I should have called it Nobel's safety powder. I mean, do you really think that when I actually do go, this is how I'll be remembered? Oh, sweetheart, of course it is. My furry-cheeked little death merchant. Well, not if I can help it. I shall reinvent my own image. What? I shall use my massive fortune to establish a special prize. One that rewards positive human endeavors in the pursuit of peace. So that when I do die, I won't just be linked to explosives. And I, Alfred Nobel, will call this special peace prize... Prizermite. Darling, why don't you call it the Nobel Peace Prize? <laughs> I love you, darling. But you have absolutely no idea when it comes to marketing. <clears throat> D. Certainly. Throughout horrible history, mankind dreamed of the wonders of journeying to the stars and stepping foot on the moon. Fifty years ago, it finally happened when American astronauts beat their Soviet Russian rivals and got their first. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. An incredible achievement. We reached beyond our grasp. The doors to the universe had been unlocked, giving mankind a chance to put aside its petty differences. I still don't get why you get to be first man on the moon, Neil. I told you, Buzz, we've been through this. I'm mission commander. Also, I was closest to the door, so, you know, it doesn't make sense. No! What? The urine pipe in my suit is broken. My leg is filling up with wee. Well, oh, there you go. We're both the first uh, guys to do something. I, I'm the first guy to walk on the moon. You're the first guy to take a leak on the moon. It's great. Sure, my mom will be really proud. At least no one at home knows about this. Uh, Neil and Buzz, this is Houston. Well done, guys. You're making history, and the whole world is listening. That's just great.